Hi, in this lecture we're going to discuss the phenomenon of group segregation. Think about your own friends. How many of them actually belong to the same group as you do? Are they from the same race, ethnicity, age and gender? And how many are actually different? Group segregation is strong when we have many group bonding ties and few or none group bridging ties. A group bonding tie is a tie between two people who belong to the same group, such as to the same racial group. A group bridging tie creates a link between people from different groups. In this case, there's strong segregation by race. Group segregation is not a matter of yes or no, existing or absent. Instead, it's a matter of degree. Group segregation ranges from non-existing to complete. To get a better picture of how strongly groups are segregated, you can use the group segregation index. It simply divides the number of group bonding ties by the total number of ties. So the more this number goes up, the larger the segregation. In this case, it's 0.92, which means that it is close to complete segregation of the friendship network. Now consider the same networks again. There are still two communities, two friendship cliques, but segregation by race is close to non-existing. To see this, consider the segregation index again. There are seven group bonding ties and 13 ties in total. So the group segregation index is 0.53. And that means there are just slightly more group bonding ties than group bridging ties. It's close to 50-50, meaning no segregation. In this example, we focused on race, but there are many groups, of course, not just racial groups. For example, we could study the degree of segregation between ethnic groups in society, or age, or religion, education, gender, income, and so on. This means that if we find that there's no segregation with respect to, for example, age, it could be that there's still a lot of segregation in terms of another dimension, such as gender. So how could we empirically study these various dimensions of segregation? Scholars often look at two areas. First, they study marriages. Scholars then make a distinction between endogamy and exogamy. Endogamy is a marriage with someone from the own group, hence a group bonding tie. Exogamy is a marriage with someone from another group, so a group bridging tie. With a marriage market table, you can compute the endogamy rate. You can divide the number of endogamous marriages by the total number of marriages. Group segregation is then strong when endogamy is common which means that many people marry a partner from their own group, and group segregation is weaker when exogamy is common. So the second area of research is the study of adolescents in school. Sociologists study if their friendships are segregated by group affiliations, such as race and gender. What are the key findings from research? Studies show that endogamy is very common. Many, many people marry someone from the own group. Research on adolescent friendship networks in school reveals strong levels of segregation. Another insight is that segregation is multidimensional. People are often segregated by race, ethnicity, gender, age, and education. And finally, these patterns have been found across societies. Now, because of this overwhelming evidence, scholars call the phenomenon of group segregation a stylized fact. We have more group bonding ties than group bridging ties. In summary, group segregation refers to the degree to which people's social connections are segregated by group affiliation, such as race, gender, and age. There is more segregation when people have more group bonding ties and fewer group bridging ties. An empirical study reveals strong evidence for group segregation. It's a stylized fact. So if we look at our friends, we see people who belong to the same group as we do. 
And that may well affect our opinions, the way we think about the world, and our perceptions of outgroups. Okay, thanks.